Now, as you come to address the assessment aspect of your TLAPS, in terms of your unit planning and assessment planning, there are a few elements that you need to be very clear about. The first is that um, units one and two, the assessment is formative, almost always. That can change though, if certain circumstances arise in year 12, where a student isn't able to complete the summative assessment in year 12, wherein some of the year 11 assessment that they have done, which was intended to be form formative, may become summative. So in the main, it's formative though. It's used as a diagnostic tool to help you with your teaching of your students and also for your students to understand how they're progressing and in their preparation for the assessment they're going to do in year 12, where it is summative and then counts towards their final marks and so forth. So in the main, as we mentioned before, the year 11 assessment mirrors the year 12 assessment because you're trying to prepare them for that year 12 assessment processes. Now, sometimes it can be slightly out of sequence and so forth because you're, you're doing things a little bit differently in year 11, but in the main, you're trying to prepare them for their year 12 summative assessment, which occurs in units three and four. Now, in that summative assessment, there will be three internal and one external assessment tasks. The three internal you get to choose, the one external will be an exam. Now, there are a few endorsed types of assessment, and we'll have a look at those. Um, and you can pick from those in terms of your um, three ex in internal assessments. We call them internal assessment IAs and external assessments EAs. Well, there's only one, so it's a little bit easier. OK, so the whole idea of the ass assessment is that you make judgments on your student's ability to meet the criteria as set down in the syllabus. Now, to help articulate that, we use criteria sheets. Now, you're used to that from technologies education, but we call them a little bit something a little bit different in year 11 and 12, and we call them instrument specific marking guides or ISMGs. Now, essentially, this is a criteria sheet for the assessment task that you've given, and it's more aligned to helping the assessor mark the work, but also so that the, um, the reviewer and the endorser can look at your task and see whether or not it is likely to achieve certain things. One is, will it allow your students to show their full range of possible um, standards? If you give a really, really simple task, it may not actually allow your students to demonstrate at the highest standards. And so their marks may be adjusted down because you didn't give them opportunities to actually demonstrate at the top criteria. Likewise, sometimes we have tasks that are just too hard. And again, it may need to be adjusted because you're not giving an opportunity for all of your students to be able to demonstrate some success. It may only be your A students that have any chance of doing well on that task. And your other students just wouldn't be able to demonstrate anything. So this is all about experience in assessment writing and coming up with really good assessable tasks that can show a whole broad range of student abilities. And the instrument specific marking guides sort of set out the framework for that. And we will be discussing assessment in a few weeks time um, where we'll go through these things in a little bit more detail. But all of it is around making judgments. Uh, you making judgments on your students work your students, as they do the tasks, making judgments on how they're going. And then also for the external reviewers to look at your work and look at your students' work and see whether or not it meets the standards as, as defined. So a few other things that you need to consider, though, when you set your assessment tasks is how authentic they're going to be. Are there opportunities for students, say, to get someone else to do the work for them or for them to use certain plagiarism tool or plag plagiarize their work um, using various software or essay writing um, companies or whatever else. So you will also need to describe 
the steps you're going to put into place to minimise the opportunities for students to misrepresent other people's work as their own or to cheat in various other ways. And we call that um, authentication. So again, we'll discuss these aspects when we look at assessment in more detail. And the final thing to think about is the summative external assessment, which is the exam that the students will take. It's be done across all the schools in the state at the same time under the same conditions and will be developed and marked by the QCAA. So you as a teacher essentially are out of the picture. Once the students go in there to do their exam, uh, you don't have any control over what's happening in that process. And you get some feedback and some report at the end. And of course, you can ask your students as they come out of the exam room how they thought they went. Um, but again, we'll talk about that in much more detail when we look at assessment specifically.